Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This is the Neo Black Themes 2014 to present latest edition. You can see it and purchase it on our website watchyouwant.com and if you enjoy these videos please subscribe to our YouTube channel Watch You Want Inc. You can see on my wrist six and a third inches 16 centimeters. This is the classic profile of the 42 millimeter Offshore. Since 1993 this has been the face and the feel of the quintessential offshore case. What sets this one apart is refinements, both on the dial and externally. So let's get started. With the fit and the feel, it's basically the classic 42. 50, essentially 53.5, 54 millimeters from extremity of lug to extremity of lug. It is 15 millimeters thick and 42 across the round of the case, but with the combination of the crown guards, the pushers, and the broad, almost cushion style lugs, the watch wears a lot bigger. It's important to emphasize that the new generation of the Hornback incorporates a measure, a thoughtful measure, that I feel is long overdue from an ergonomic standpoint. The standardization of a versatile pin buckle to get an easy fit on a smaller wrist was genius. Why it took so long to translate this from the diver rubber strap to the Hornback, I may never know, but it's here, it's now, and it's wow. Now the watch itself features significant external upgrades from the previous generation, the pre-2014 42s, and the biggest changes have come on the crown side, where the crown collar as well as the pushers are now faceted and diversely finished ceramic with polished and grained elements. They basically banish the old nitrile covers, if you remember that synthetic that had a tendency to get ragged and gummy on the old offshores, that's gone, replaced by essentially indelible ceramic. Now inboard, you can see that there are classic Royal Oak elements and classic offshore elements. From the Royal Oak, we have the octagonal bezel, the classic image of the Royal Navy battleship porthole. We have the hexagonal bezel bolts inset within a beautifully finished, polished and grained Royal Oak bezel. Now from the offshore line, we have that oversized and externally expressed bezel gasket, which becomes part of the style of the watch. Rather than a functional fixture, it becomes an additional layer and an element of articulation of the case and bezel assembly. Beautifully finished, you can see the taper of this bevel, hand applied, just as you would on a full steel bracelet. It's as seamless flowing into the case from the leather strap as it would be on the traditional Royal Oak with the full integrated bracelet. What it brings to the table here is an additional element of contrast from the leather to the brushed to the polished to the vertical portions of the case. It has almost a machine aesthetic, almost like it's built up as a sort of uh, exoskeleton of a the superstructure of a tank or a battleship or even some sort of oh, space age vessel. The bottom line is the watch just has a look that just screams and exudes machine. And that I really don't get from the original Royal Oak. That one's elegant. This one has a sort of modernist brutality to it. Now the dial also upgraded dramatically. Here we see the in inclusion of little red elements that add a touch of color and create that classical sporty tritone, red, white, and black. Now it's always in proportion, um, first starting with black as the majority, then the white elements, and then the shocks of red. This is something we've seen on the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Tour Auto, on the Shack, even on the Grand Prix. It's very effective, and without explicitly shouting motorsports, that's the vibe I'm getting from this watch. Now, additional elements include bigger, bolder Arabic numerals and new faceted hands. The calibrations of the sub-registers have also changed relative to the old black themes. There's a lot going on. There have been many detail transformations, but they add up to a much more refined overall look. And the monotone date disc hidden within the Cyclops magnifier inset within the mega tapisserie dial completes both the aesthetic and the functionality of the watch. Now on the case back, you get Audemars Piguet's first use of a display case back on a serial production Royal Oak Offshore. Now the Truly was the first of the 42s to feature a display case back, but that was a limited run. Since 2014, the 42 allows you to see the Audemars Piguet in-house caliber 3126-3840 modular chronograph caliber, and it is a monster. 365 parts, 59 joules, automatic with a 50-hour power reserve. The refinements are largely self-evident, that is, you can see them. Ceramic rotor bearings within a fully engraved rotor, featuring the crests of the Audemars and Piguet families. 
significant because it is the largest and oldest independently owned watchmaker in Switzerland, still controlled by the founding families, so the engraving is apropos. You can see the Gyromax style balance, free sprung for durability, oscillating at 3 hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour on a dual anchored balance bridge, Rolex style, for timing stability. Again, it'll shake off shock and keep good time. Not just a 50 hour power reserve, but with smooth bi directional winding to top it off, Audemars Piguet wanted to create a tactile distinction between the unidirectional winders common on oversized sports watches from Panerai and Hublot, which are very dependent on value based calibers. So, with smooth uh, bi directional winding, I should say, they're taking another page from Rolex's book, uh, prioritizing smoothness. A little bit less efficient than unidirectional, but with the addition of ceramic bearings, high efficiency, unlubricated, and sealed for life, you make up that lost measure of efficiency and add long-term durability. Now, it is a chronograph caliber built by Dubois de Praz, so we'll start that up so you can see some of the chrono action on the dial side. But this watch, featuring both aesthetic and technical refinements over the old JLC chronograph caliber, more refined, more beautiful, more complex, finer in every way. It represents a tremendous infusion of value into the offshore, and it has since roughly 2007. Paired with the new post-2014 dial and case, as well as hornback and pinbuckle strap, it's a phenomenal work of high horology that is nevertheless rough and ready. You can see it on our website, watchyouwant.com.